Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 127 of ASP.NET video tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about different ways that are available to cache application data, removing an item from cache, similarities and differences between cache and application state variables. In part 126 of the ASP.NET video tutorial, we discussed about caching application data using direct assignment. So if you remember, we have this method called getProductsData, which executes this stored procedure, retrieves the products from the database, and returns them as a data set. So here in the button click event, we invoke that method and then whatever data set that is returned by this method is then stored in this variable ds which is then cached using this products data key. So here we are storing this data set in cache using direct assignment. Now apart from caching data using direct assignment there are other options as well. We can either use cache objects insert method or add method. Let's look at using each one of them. So instead of using the direct assignment, I want to use cache objects insert method to cache application data. And to do that, so cache dot insert. So I'm using this method. And look at this, the moment I open this bracket, there are five overloaded versions as you can see here. And obviously the simplest of these five overloaded versions is this method, which expects the cache key and the value that we want to store. Okay, so there are several other overloaded versions as well. So the second version is here. Uh, apart from the key and value, it also expects a cache dependency. So we'll talk about cache dependency in a later video session. Basically, cache dependency means, you know, obviously, uh, when you have data that is stored in the cache, if it is dependent on a data source, and if the data in that source changes, I want to obviously refresh the data that's present in my cache okay so I can do that using this cache dependency object we'll talk about this in a later video session and similarly I have several other parameter I mean overloaded versions as well which takes different parameters here in this case absolute expiration and sliding expiration again we'll we can set expiry date for a cache object we'll talk about that also in a later video session so we, we will discuss about using all these different overloaded versions in a later video session but for now let's use that simple version which expects just the key and value. So here the key is going to be the same one, products data. And the value, look at this, this is very important. The data type of the value that we want to cache is object, meaning you can store anything in the cache object. Okay, here I want to store data set, so I specify DS. So I save that and run my application. Obviously here we haven't changed the functionality in any way. It is just that inst instead of using direct assignment to, to store you know, the data set in the cache object, we are using the cache objects insert method. And if you remember here, uh, we have this SP get products method, which basically is blocking the execution of the stored procedure for five seconds. Instead of that, I'm going to update that to one second just to save some time. Okay, so obviously now when I click that, the data should be returned in less than a second and you can see that it took one second and it loaded the data from database. I click this again, we get that data set from cache object and obviously zero seconds load time there. Okay, all right, so we have just seen how to use the cache objects insert method. Now let's see how to use the other option which is using the cache objects add method. So cache dot add. Now look at this, cache objects add method does not have any overloads, meaning we have to supply values for all these parameters. Okay, now obviously the first parameter is the key. In our case, the key is going to be products data. So let's copy and specify the key there. And then the next parameter is obviously the value. The value is again data set. And look at the third parameter, cache dependency. For now, let me just pass null for cache dependency. And then we have to specify absolute expiration. Now, if you don't want to specify absolute expiration, look at here what it says. Um, you know, you can specify if you if you are using sliding expiration, the absolute expire. I mean, the absolute expiration parameter must be system.web.caching.cache.no absolute expiration. 
okay now i don't want to specify any absolute or sliding expiration so for this parameter for now i'm going to say no absolute expiration let's use that system.web.caching on top so that we don't have to type uh, the entire fully qualified namespace every time so system.web.caching so here we need to specify no sliding expiration which is present in, in the cache class so cache class dot no sliding expiration no absolute expiration here and then we need to specify no sliding expiration because I don't want to specify any sliding expiration at the minute so now no sliding expiration and cache item priority we'll talk about cache item priority in a later video session as well so ca for now I'm going to specify cache item priority dot default and then finally cache item removed callback delegate now for this at the moment I'm going to pass now okay so if you look at this method again we are simply caching here the data set using this products data all the other parameters I have set them to their defaults now so this line again is equivalent to uh, any of these okay so obviously now if I run this um, behavior is not going to change in any way except that now we are using cache objects add method okay so the behavior is the same alright another important thing is that we have to be extremely cautious when dealing with cache keys assigning a value to a cache key that is already being used will silently overwrite the existing value without any warnings whatsoever meaning let's say for example in the page load uh, I'm trying to store an item in the cache you know let's say in page load I'm, I'm setting cache of my key is equal to value 1 and when I click the button let's actually comment this here in the button click event for the time being okay let's say in the button click event I'm just changing that cache of my key to value 2 now look at this in the page load event which happens before button click you're setting that key to value 1 and in the button click event you are changing it to value 2 in the sense you're assigning a different value to that key so what happens to value 1 it gets silently overwritten so if that's your intention then that's fine but if it happens unintentionally or accidentally then you will lose the value that is already present in the key so just be a little cautious when dealing with these cache keys obviously now when we say lbl message dot text is equal to cache of my key dot to string so what will happen instead of value 1 value 2 will be displayed in the label because that will be silently overwritten the value 1 okay alright so let's get rid of this and let's uncomment this code and let's get rid of this line alright and to remove an item from cache explicitly so if we want to remove the cached item explicitly we can use cache objects remove method so obviously if I want to remove an item with key my key I simply say cache dot remove let's say for example uh, on this web form let's have another button here and obviously when I click that button I want to remove the cache object so cache dot remove and look at that we need to specify the cache item key that we want to remove in this case I want to remove the item with key products data so I'm gonna copy that and specify it here okay and then as soon as I remove that I want to display the message in the label stating the cache item is now removed so the cached item is now removed okay so let's go ahead and run this now so uh, when the web form loads up and then when we click that button we should be able to retrieve data from the database and load it in the grid view control as as well as cache it I click the button again so I get it from the cache so when I click this button what should happen the cache item should be removed 
let's click that button and see what's gonna happen look at this the cache item is now removed but then look at the data I haven't lost the data so where is this data coming from now this is not coming from cache this is not coming from the database this data is actually maintained on the web form because we have uh, you know a view state enabled for this grid view control by default so if we disable the view state for the grid view control using enable view state property so there is enable view state property which is turned on by default I'm gonna set that to false and then let's go ahead and run this now so now since I have disabled view state look at that when I say get products obviously we get the data from database now I click it again photo retrieve from cache now I'm going to remove the item from cache look at that the cache item is now removed so as soon as the web form posted back you know the cache item is removed and then since we don't have a uh, view state enabled for the grid view control we don't have the data there anymore now if we want to remove the item from cache explicitly we use remove method but remember you know an item may be removed automatically from cache when any of the following conditions are true now the cache item can have an expiry we can set an expiry date and time on on the cache object and if the cached item has expired then obviously it will be automatically removed by sp.net okay on the other hand a cache item may also be automatically removed if the system or the web server is running low on memory and the cache is full so web server will will come around and then remove the items from cache okay so again that will happen automatically if the web server is running low on memory now we can also set a cache dependency we'll be talking about that in a later video session so when there is a cache dependency established and then the item that the cache object is dependent on has changed obviously we need to refresh the cache or or we can specify what to do so basically when the cache dependency has changed you know even in those circumstances the cache item may be removed automatically but then if you want to remove the cache object explicitly we use remove method in a way cache object is actually similar to application state in fact this is uh, a common interview question as well what is the similarity between application state variables and cache cache uh, objects you know basically the scope both of them are global which means they are available anywhere within the web application for example you know I have stored here on the button click event we are storing this item products data within cache not only on web form 1 in any of the web forms in throughout your entire web application this you know cached data will be available so the basically the accessibility is global at the application level just like application state variables okay now what is the difference between them items stored in cache can have expiry whereas items stored in application state will never expire so the cache objects gives us some flexibility you can you can specify expiration time um, but whereas with application state variables we cannot do that so those are the similarities and differences between cache and application state variables on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.